now, John Webb, he is a massive crowd favourite. This is the guy with the speakers. This is the guy who brings the party to King of the Hammers. Expect to see him on the trails as he comes around. There'll be music blasting. Those aren't lights on the top of his roof bar there. Those are speakers. <laughs> Well, I think it's been almost two months since the Hammers, and I finally got a chance to come down and see you. Right. And this is John Webb. Hello. The John Webb. <laughs> um, and Hammers is over. Yeah. I, I saw you down on the lake bed, uh, and I wanted to do my, you know, after Hammers interview here, ground zero. At my... The Webb residence. Right. right. Uh, for this reason. Hot rods, Harley. Yeah, too um, much stuff. <laughs> Let's just say uh, <laughs> when I turned down the street, I didn't have to look at what address I was going right. to. It was pretty obvious. Pretty obvious where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're here to talk about your KOH 2023 and uh, tell me a little bit uh, about how it went. Uh, first off, uh, where'd you qualify? Uh, qualified number 50. So that was what, 25th off the line, mid pack. Kind of what I was going for. Um, you know, I got to. I don't have the endless budget on spare or spare parts anymore. Um, well, th that's why we call you kind of like the Robin Hood of uh, a 4400. Yeah. Maybe like the People's Choice Award, you right. know, because uh, you're a regular dude. We're we're here in your two car garage, right. In your single story house in a you know little quaint neighborhood. And right. This is where, this is where it all happens, yeah. right here, right? So yeah. You may not have this crazy big budget, but. I mean, the car was ready, right? Yeah, car was ready to go. Um, and yeah, that kind of limits me on qualifying a little bit just because I don't have a spare air, A arm, or any other parts where. You can't break a pre owned CV. Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pre owned anything, you know? Like, yeah. I, my, my parts are pretty limited. So. And you um, got a lot of those parts, uh, once again, from Jason's old oh, yeah. car. So it was a clone of his old car. So we knew it was a fast car. And we exactly. knew they were good parts. Exactly, yeah. So so in qualifying, you're not just going to lay it all out there because you don't have anybody to put in a new tranny, to put in a new diff. Exactly, you know? exactly. Okay. I mean, I got some spares, but not to the limit of, you know, well, you know, if I break that one part I don't have a spare for, and then I'm screwed. So it's uh, it makes me stay back, you know limit my throttle a little bit just because I can't fix it and I want to make the main race that's the main main goal of you know uh, that is being a strategy because see a lot of people even if they don't have those spare parts they go down there and they just lay it all out anyway in qualifying and we saw a ton of carnage oh yeah in qualifying and those there was some of those guys that never made it to the big race yeah because they screwed up in qualifying well so. you know I'm sitting there for half an hour before qualifying and watching people roll down hills and I'm like, oh Winch man. Out yeah. And qualifier, <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and, uh, and you made, you did, so dur on qualifying day, um, you made a move that actually I convinced a couple other guys to do. Um, you switched your plan. I did. Right there. Uh, at the beginning of the week, I was like, oh, left line all day long. It's so torn up now. And I'm thinking the right line. Sitting right at there. The bottom of qualifying. I did. Yeah. And what did you do? I went to the right. It was pretty nerve wracking because I really didn't run any of the bottom part of uh, Chocolate Thunder just because I know it changes so much through the day, even qualifying or the night before. All everybody's the guys out there. The night before and party the wheeling, you know, yeah. just doing, doing, tear, moving rocks. Everything's moving. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to like, okay, I'm going to hit this line for sure. So in the morning, I walked it with Jay. I went down there and met up with Jason, me and my son, and we kind of walked it. And I was like, okay, I think the left line's the way to go. You know, it, it's just smoother, easier. It looked that way, right? And then through the half an hour, 45 minutes, I was sitting down there and watching everybody go through. And I was like, well, maybe it's not the left line. Well, I, I think the left line was faster, but the right line was, yeah, yeah, right line was guaranteed. And, you know? and a lot of those guys didn't have the experience to do what you you did and call an audible. Right. Like, it, look, if they pre-run that left line, even if everybody was getting hung up, they just stuff right in and hang up too. Like right. I, I couldn't really understand it. Like we saw the right line stay open and develop all day, yet some of the real high up racers were still hammering into that left, that left line, line and getting hung up. Right. So I mean that says a little something about um, you know how how you're calculated and your style of driving and the decisions you made. I mean, in my opinion, what you did on that qualifier, you know, 
plays forward in, in, in race day. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. every trail you hit, it, it, you could pre-run everything till you're blue in the face until that car's broken down on one of the trails, and you got to you, you, you got to figure audible. something you else out. Yeah, you got to hit that go. crazy yeah. right line or whatever. So you, pu you pulled the light, right line. I did. Um, one shot at it. No yep, problem. No problem. Um, and then you could make up a lot of time, you know, all the way around that loop. Exactly. And you 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 qualified right about where you like to be every year. So yeah. middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. Fifty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and John Webb always likes to start there, either in the middle or even in the back. Yeah. And yeah, then I just started dead last on one year. <laughs> picking people off. Right? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, yeah. in the front, I mean, it would be cool, no dust, whatever. But I love trying to catch people and pass them. I, I mean, don't know if that style of, of racing, you might get used to it later on, but I just don't know if it fits your yeah who you are. Right, you know? right. Um, so tell us what happened on race day. You start 50th, you're, start you're 50th, off the line. Off the line, uh, race Pr days. Pretty dusty, right? Yeah, oh yeah, super dusty. Um, we started side by side with you know the other car that pretty much started 25th off the line. Um, and we got ahead of him, because I was like, all right, at least get a little clean the, air. The guy next to you. Yeah, exactly, off yeah, the starting uh -huh. line. So we, we pulled on him, and then uh, through the lake bed, it was... Hey. It was pretty dusty. Your was, car does killer in that type of terrain. That first yeah. loop is set for your car. Oh, yeah. Right? And, and you, you didn't used to have an IFS no. car, so this this <laughs> new old car, you know, yeah. uh, uh, is really fast through that It's area. insane. I, yeah. I, I, and I, the, the, another problem is I don't get enough seat time in it, so, you know, I don't really race the whole series or anything. So the first lap, I'm pretty timid in the car, somewhat. It's funny you say pretty timid because, you know, we were talking to Eric and Breck and Miramon, and they said that, their favorite, uh, their favorite thing they saw the whole first desert lap was when you blew by them. <laughs> <laughs> they said you were basically on two wheels, like out the bushes, and the, like oh, you so know, that I mean. was their excitement for the day. So it was probably yeah. your excitement in the car. Too. Yeah, I mean, and, and I feel like I'm under driving the thing the whole time because yeah, that like thing's just amazing. More. Oh yeah, yeah, like you know, yeah. like I get hit that probably where he saw me, I could go 20 miles faster. I feel yeah. like you know, so. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, learning you're about, holding, what were your speeds you're holding? Uh, I think on the first lap we were doing like 90 to like a hundred, um, yeah. helicopter chasing us on. And there's the, no good. open lake beds really. That's, no, that's through yeah, it's all whoops. I mean, there's some track. good smooth yeah. sections that you're like, yeah. luckily me and Jason pre-ran it. So I was like, oh, this good section's coming up Yeah. and we just, you know, send in it. So Jason still, uh, he works with you quite a bit on you know, oh, yeah. you guys so, pass things off of each our, other. Our best time is pre-running down there. We we always try to meet up, and um, one of my good buddies, Los, he has a barbecue on his tailgate, and we cook oh, tacos. I know, I know Carlos. Yeah, oh, we cook yeah. tacos in the desert, and that's uh -huh. one of our, like, kind of our traditions to pre-running, because it's a lot of seriousness, too, you know? Like, hey, we got to get out here and do this, do that. And, and Jason you gotta have fun. focused. Jason oh, yeah. really focuses. So I, I, I believe that probably you and Los bring a little bit of relaxation to I, them as well. I think well. so, let's yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, man, let's, chill. let's, let's yeah. not go Let's not go to that section yet. Let's have some tacos. Tacos, yeah, yeah exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll go check that out after lunch, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Right, and usually we'll, like, meet him at a spot. Hey, let's meet out at the top of Aftershock, and he'll, yeah. you know, go run five trails and then meet us there kind of yeah. deal. So he gets his serious, you know, pre-running. And, you know, I do the same trails, but... Um, I usually pre-run in the free-for-all, and it's real hard to keep up with. And the free-for-all free is your trail buggy. It's, yeah. it's in the back. It's we'll, in the we'll back, collecting dust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh -huh. um, so you rip the, you, you know, real fast on the first lap. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. It came into the, to main pits with no issues on that no first issues. Lap, right? I guess we're like 13 minutes on corrected time behind Jason. That's uh, pretty good. So yeah, it was. So you probably gained twenty spots. I'd oh say. yeah, I, something like that. It's hard to tell because people pull in like the the first pit, and you're yeah, you, you never I don't know really. Yeah, and it's well, I just well, this, drive. This would be you a know? good question. Did you get passed by anybody on the first? Lap? No, I don't think I passed a, a quite a few people. But, but you never got passed I by never, anybody. Never got passed there was on some the first fast lap. People behind you. There was. You know, so there, there was. was a chance of getting past people that were laying it all out. Oh know? yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so you entered the rock trails uh, on the second it, lap. Yeah. Um, and any did you run into any traffic jams or problems? Not too much. Uh, I got stuck behind a couple people coming out of uh, what was it? Um, not we went down Spooners and then Outer Limits. We're coming out like the bypass. Yeah, of that's outer weird limits. how you didn't do the whole Outer Limits trail. Yeah, kinda, there's a cut. Mm -hmm. And uh, and right then I kind of like there's a cut before that where the trail goes up and then you could cut off probably a quarter mile and i was like 
somebody's going to be going that way just to so cut some time. Did you see anybody go that way? I didn't, but I got stuck behind. I was thinking it. I was like, oh, somebody's going to go. And then I was stuck behind somebody's dust, and I had to do this so crazy side this, hill. This also tells about your characters. You know all the trails down at the Hammers. I do. You know where you can cut a corner, where you can't cut a corner. Yeah. Uh, you're very knowledgeable of the area. Um, and it is the thought has never crossed your mind to cut cores. No, uh, no. And something was brought up that uh, there was 13 finishing racers that didn't cut course and didn't get any penalties. Right. And who was one of those guys? Yeah, me. <laughs> right there. John Webb, yeah. ninth yeah. finisher overall, yeah. didn't yeah. cut course. Yeah. Um, Clean race, a lot, I mean. A lot of guys aren't doing that on purpose, but at the same time, you know. Yeah. You know where the course well, is. And you know, a lot of people were losing GPS this year and, and but if you lost your GPS, you could I'd, race the whole race. I could. Um, the desert sections are a little, like, because it's just the desert, right? So, but any trail there, I, I've so pre-ran. So the people that I've, lost GPS were not getting penalized on drifting in the desert. Right. They were getting penalized on, on rock doing trails. the wrong rock trails. Right. Making the wrong turns. Right. And, and if you do your homework like, like you do, like right. Jason does and yeah. a lot of other guys, you should never have no. to have that happen. No, I've been going down there since 02, so yeah. it's like... You know, the hammers, I mean, there's new trails, obviously, every year, I yeah. feel like, but uh, just the gist of the hammers, like, knowing kind of where to go, this mountain range here, like, I, I'm pretty... So, because you didn't do that cutoff... Right. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, no, no. you know the yeah. whole area, but so, <laughs> so, because you didn't do that cutoff, you got behind somebody. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly, and it ate some dust for a little bit, but I did, I had to do, like, a sketchy side hill pass on him, which was all right, you know, I didn't, yeah. you know, touch his car or nothing, but... Yeah. Uh, but it, just in the back of my head, you know, like somebody that doesn't know or is just in the moment, because a lot of people get in that racing, you know, everything goes out the window when they put the helmet on, right? We see and, that all yeah. the time. I call it, it race drunk. Exactly. And they'll just like, oh, that's the way. It's the quickest, you know, like, you yeah. know, and, and do, I mean, I get it. It happens, but um, I try to be calm and collective, you know, like. And your co-driver wasn't. He's fairly new this oh, year, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. First year in the car um, with me. It, you didn't have that little guy, Hussey, with nah, you. Nah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, the he little was, munchkin. The munchkin guy yeah. wasn't there. <laughs> no, that sucks. I know. I know. Um, but how did he do? How would the new co driver? He did good. He did yeah. real good. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, we got to perfect his winching skills a little bit. But besides that, he did great. He, I mean, for his first time in the car, he did really good. Yeah. Yeah. So on that first lap, um, you get some dust. You got some traffic in front of you. Right. Um, did, did you have the winch on the or on the second? On the second loop? lap? No, not no. at all. Okay. No. So we hit you know Jack, and we did that sketchy side hill. But I feel like my car side hills like it's IFS stupid. IFS cars yeah. just come right across side. Exactly. Hills. So yeah. yeah, everything was smooth on the second lap. Um, it was clean. You know. No tires. No tires. Uh, took, did you take gas in main pit? Or? Uh, just main. Uh -huh. So we got a fuel tower, a yeah. cool fancy thing. And, pumps like 30 gallons and 30 seconds thing yeah, yeah. and uh gets it done so didn't even get out of the car no uh took gas and took then gas. headed out on lap three lap three um, yeah and then this is something that um i i always say luck doesn't uh, i have said luck luck does play into racing right and then i i kind of took it back and because it was taking away from all these guys that the teams work really hard and everything and it shouldn't be about luck right but lap lap three is going to be luck because you got to run into all this lap traffic. Lap traffic. And you, yeah. it's where you hit them. <laughs> right. Like, are you in a bottleneck when you catch them, or are you right. in a spot where you can pass? Right. right. Um, so what what did you start running into on lap three? Well, lap three, um, we were doing pretty good. I think we got passed um, by Vaughn in the desert at one point, and he was, like, on a mission. So by the time you're starting into lap three, you have – been passed by a couple people from way in the back of the pack. Right? Yeah. Vaughn was one of them? Vaughn was pretty much the one I can remember the most. Um, and then you said you were kind of going back and forth with Brian Crofts a little yeah, bit. Yeah, me and too. Crofts were going back and forth. I think yeah. uh, I think on lap two, he, he kind of bumped into me out of aftershock, and uh, I sped up my pace, and then I was like, hey, just go, man. And, and, and he... It, this brings up a little bit of like, uh, there's been some controversy about cars hitting other cars, and uh, there's a time to do it and a time not to do it. Right. And I mean, I, every race I've been in, we have been bumped in one way or another right. from the rear. Right. We have bumped somebody in front of us. Yeah, it happens. And it's kind of like a little, like on Days of Thunder, the little, yeah. hey, hey I'm, I'm here. here, get out right? of the way, you know? you know? And so, yeah, you, you try and 
pick up your pace a little bit and then you make that decision, you know what? Screw it. I don't want to wreck my car. I'm racing exactly. my pace. Exactly. Pull over, let Cross get by. Exactly. And then you said you, you got him right after that. Yeah, again, I think right? I passed him again. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of, me and him were back and forth. and and uh, it, it seems was, like every race I've ridden with Yoder, we're in our little mini race with one other guy. Yeah. And there's been years, uh, goes, I, you yeah. remember years Yoder and I were racing when you were in the old car. Right. We probably went back and forth Ten times. Oh yeah, with you guys and oh, us, because yeah. we're kind of at that same level. For sure. And so this year, Cross was that guy that you, you yeah we were swapped you know and I I, yeah. I was fun. I was having a good time. You're like, oh, there's Cross again. Let's try to get him. And then you know he's he's quick. He's just that car's fast. Yeah. Um, and, and he hangs it out. So it's you know it's good and bad, right? Um, yep. Yep. He's a great driver. He's got yeah. a great car, and exactly. there's no animosity when you're trading no. the paint up. No, no, it's fun. It, I mean, it's, yeah. it makes it racing. You know, like there's a huge race going. Like you're saying. Huge race going on, but, but when you have, you're like, battling, races. yeah, when you're battling with somebody, you're like, oh, there he is, you know, and like it, it makes it fun, right? And I've seen people that are, you know, in fiftieth place or only on lap two, and they're not going to even make lap three, but they get up with somebody who's at that same level in the race, right. and everything just goes away, and you just have to start having yeah. fun with let's that. Let's wheel, person, let's have right? fun, yeah, let's you're go wheeling, wheeling you're man. You're winching yeah. each other, you're doing whatever. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, one of the real fun parts about being in King of the Hammers and For racing sure. it and being out there. For sure. On the course, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're now, you know, up in the top 10 contender <laughs> level. So, you know. Well, that car is amazing, You're man. getting it on, it's, right? Yeah. And so, at some point, um, you know, that, that race car is a clone of Jason's old race car, yep. right? And did you see Jason's old race car? On I the did. Race? I did for a second. Out in the <laughs> <For> desert. <laughs> one second. On lap one, right? On lap one, and yeah. And you blew past him. Blew past him, yeah. Well, you realize that that car could have kept right up with you. I because know. it is your car. I know. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so, so I, yeah. Saw it in front of you, saw it in the mirror, yeah, gone. Gone. Yeah, gone. Gone. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, lap three, you're moving pretty good. You're, you're yep. picking up the pace. You're, yep. you're up there in the top 10 to 20 area. Yeah, we, and uh. Then, where do you come into the first real traffic -y problem area? Well, King's Veto, you know. Just like everybody. Yeah, yeah, yep, it was a We've complete... had great stories from King's Veto. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. it was like a, a, like a free for all, like a playthrough. Exactly, you know? exactly. Um, and what did you see in there? So we pulled up, and the laser nut uh, car was there, broken, um, kind of right in the perfect line of the trail. God, that's common. I know, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Cody. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, Cody's Cody's a good guy. I mean, yeah. and uh, so it was broken there, and then uh, I caught out to Vaughn, and he was trying to go around him with pretty much the only line on that side of the hill, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Everything else, like Waze was there, and then one of those Can-Ams were there. And Can-Ams like winching like a straight vertical ledge because um, they're so light that you yeah, just, just pull, your pull right wherever you map. want, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then Waze was hitting. So I was like, is he stuck? Because he wasn't really moving when we pulled up. But he was rehooking a winch line and winching through some crazy big boulder stuff yeah, too, right? Stuff yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. And then so I got up behind Vaughn, and then Vaughn's trying, trying, and then he flops it on his side. And I sat there probably for, you know, 20 minutes plus, I feel like. Oh, that's brutal when time And I'm like, ticking. and it's just ticking. And I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe I'll try this high, high, high line, which later I saw Eric Miller do. But it's pretty sketchy, right? It, and I think that's the line Cross did, Cross did, yeah. yeah. So you go high up on the, on, the, on the side hill, and then you would have to, like, drop back in to the trail, right? And with Vaughn there rolled over, people, you know, winching. I'm like, I try to, like crawl it a little bit but i didn't want to like super it send was a it full commitment line it's and then too if I, dangerous for the people exactly and i didn't want to okay. roll and then do have two cars roll on their sides there the, 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 no good came from that so i sat there for like 20 minutes they tried to winch a few times they were pulling rocks down into the trail and i was like all right i can't sit here anymore i'm gonna j just try to send it over kind of use vaughn's car as a little leverage and and get up over and and, and so, then, uh, so I heard you drove on Vaughn's car. Yeah, a little bit. And, but <laughs> I feel bad. You, you know? were waiting so long that at that point, even they kind of moved out of the way and said, "Yeah, give it a shot." Yeah, up, I mean, it. they weren't happy about it, obviously, because you know, I'm. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna sit here all day and while you're like winching rocks back down. And I gave you a good 20, 30, even probably more than that time to. So figure this, this is out. where that racer courtesy goes is like, is it something you should do, you shouldn't do? I you know. already made the decision not to put them in danger exactly. by going up on the hill. And so and it didn't wreck the car. I mean, no. A couple tires over. Exactly. Tire. And we were we were through there pretty quick. And you, you know? made it right through at that point? Well, I got high centered a little bit. We winched at like 
two feet and I was gone. Yeah. So I was like, hey man, you so know. So that's your first time with your co-driver getting out of the car exactly. winching. So you, exactly. maybe you had a little frustration of him kind of learning the signals. And what's yeah, going on. I mean, it was just more or less like we, we kind of, oh, on this third lap on outer limits, we lost comms. So oh. it couldn't talk to each other. That's a common thing. I know, too. I know, it's terrible. So he's first time co-driving. Co-driving. And he's like, this way, this way. This well, I kind of knew where I was going. Yeah. Like, you uh, know, like yeah. I didn't really need him to tell me. It yeah. was more or less, I the communication for me to him to kind of walk him through what we were going to do during that winch yeah. time. So you couldn't talk so to I him. So I couldn't talk to him. So I was like, hey, get out and winch, kind of hand yeah. signals. Yeah, that's, and then, that's and then he, good. He's kind of like, first time, he's got the blood flowing. You can't even talk to him on how to get strapped back exactly. in. Exactly. So yeah, so. He gets back in the car, King's Veto, you guys. Well, at that point, I was just like, hey, stay out. Let's just, just walk the trail. So, we, so he walked it. We I think we winched one other little stupid spot. Um, and then we got out of it, and then he hopped back in the car. And then right then, I saw Robbie Gordon coming up in uh, one of the Gomez's cars on that trail. Oh, that's funny. That wasn't the course, was it? Well, I, I thought he was on his second lap. So I was like, oh, he's on his second lap. Because that was part of the second oh, lap. Oh, I got you, yeah. Yeah, so then and then we well, tore off. Come to find out, he definitely bypassed King v King's Veto there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way he says he made up for it is he backed back down in and let right. somebody winch. Maybe... I think it might help Vaughn. Vaughn, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I don't really know if that qualifies as a hall pass for, I know. for missing the trail. Right. Um, but right. they penalized him. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and what did that do for you by it, penalizing Robbie? It, it kicked Robbie? me up from 10th to the 9th. So I'm, I'm happy with so it. So Ro Robbie, at that point you were leaving, you saw Robbie coming around, but you start uh, heading out on the course. Right. Um, and what else happened on that lap three? Lap three, we did good all the way up to. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, sledge. Sledge. Yeah. And we got so this. So sledge, you had to do on the third lap. You didn't have exactly. to do it on the second lap. Right. And sledge has always been a gnarly, uh, you know, plaque line. Yeah. And we've gone down it before, but this year it was up, up it. it. It's always gnarly going right. up. Right. Right. And um, it's com the lines completely changed. It's full from, to the right yeah. now instead of to the left. Yeah. It's weird. Which, which, I was talking to Marcos Gomez, and you, you tell me if you believe this. Marcos did not winch on right. on sledge, and Darian was there to help him. And Darian said, ah, get out of my way. I can do this. You know? And so. I think he did winch. So Marcos told me that he, not only did he drive it, but he drove it the old left line way uh, over those giant boulders. I think there's video. And you know how gnarly that left line is? <laughs> oh, yeah. So we can look into that. Yeah. But apparently Marcos says he drove it left line over the boulders next to the wall. Huh. So uh. but you pulled up. Uh, you winched it, and you told me you almost had a oh shit moment. Yeah, we like the car got stuck. We got wedged like right after the ledge, even, and we got wedged. The rear of the car got so wedged, I was like, almost. And I got that new motor with a bunch of power, oh, and I was like, everything. giving it gas, and I was like, this thing's not wanting to move, you know. Like, and I tried reverse, same thing. I was like, and you know. In the moment, I should have went higher driver, and it would have been no if big you, deal. You see, if but, you're planning to winch a line, then you line up in that spot to winch right. it. But if you're going to try and drive it first and then winch, it, it, it tends to throw you in a bad spot. Exactly. Not the, and that, that's, what and happened. that's what happened to me. I, I tried to drive. I was like, oh, maybe I can just bump in. I tried like four times, and I was like, I'm not killing the car. Let's finish the race. Let's so, winch it. So you winched it, and from there on out, it's a couple trails, and then it's yeah. home free. Home right? free, so, yeah. You were you were letting it eat, so you got. Oh, yeah. This is the first time with the uh, LS7. What do you think about that? Oh, it's that? amazing. The third yeah. lap, I'm I'm getting comfortable with the car. Um, that desert section. So you got was, what thirty or forty miles left, right? Yeah. And did you get to go through the dry lake bed on the back side of the mountain? I did. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. that's where you got your top speed, I'm sure. Nah, I think it was out in the first lap. I got my top really? speed. Yeah. By then, I'm like. Keep the car together for drive line. What was wise. your top speed on the GPS? I think it was uh, only like 97. Oh, man, you didn't break 100? Uh, All right. keeping it cool. My drive shafts, man. It's, I got gotcha. you. They, they, they don't sound the best. So <laughs> leaving, leaving there, heading back to the finish line, um, did, you, did you pass anybody or did anybody pass you from sledge out? I don't think I, don't think I passed anybody on that. There was nothing rememberable or like, oh, that was and awesome. And Robbie Gordon never finished in front of you. He no, was he was just, wait, um, he's behind me. But on corrected but time, at first they said 32 seconds. He was ninth and you were tenth. Right? Yeah, he beat me How'd by that thirty. Feel? Yeah, thirty. I'm like thirty-two seconds, really. You know, like. Yeah. And then you know you start thinking like, oh, maybe I could, I should have pushed it a little harder in the desert. But I was 
I was probably a solid 90 the whole time. Well, I watched that you uh, come through that rhythm section along the side of the mountain and come across the finish line. And uh, right. I know that you had to get a new song on the radio right. and kind of <laughs> come in, and yeah. compose yourselves and uh, right. cruise into the finish line. It was awesome to see you guys finish. I think Thank I you. ran out there right before yeah. you were coming through the gates um, and go up there on the podium. and. and you know, the people's choice. Right. I mean, everybody loves to see John Webb finish up there in the top 20. And to be Thank top you. 10 and then yeah. be bumped to, to ninth, ninth yeah. is like, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, right? for sure. For and, sure. Uh, do you have any uh, regrets about how you race the race? Like, do you feel, I could have done this, I could have done that? Because everybody has I mean, that. you always think of that stuff, but we did the best we could. And, and it was a good race. And we had no issues. And my pit crew killed it on helping me with the car and everybody being down there. I mean, you can't do it without all them. So, um, it was a good day. It was a good race. Um, yeah, I got, and you, and, I mean, it is what it is. And you're yeah. perfectly happy with my oh, 100%. King of yeah, the top 10. Though, I mean, in, in the United States, yeah. all the elite, you know, For racers, sure. right. For in, sure. a, in a car built here in Concord, California, yeah. in the state streets, you know, <laughs> yeah. amongst yeah. hot rods and everything. Exactly. Um, exactly. And you know, you were there for two weeks, like yeah, I, a long I left time. Right after the race, right? Right. And then on Sunday, I'm texting you and calling you, and I'm figuring you're on the way home. I can talk to you, and you're like, I'm "Oh no, yeah. I'm still here." <laughs> like the race was over. Everybody's, you know, yeah. heading out, and oh, you're yeah. cooking hamburgers with the kids, and the wife was yeah. there, and you're out wheeling, and you know. So yeah. that says something about what you get out of King of the Hammers. For sure, it's, it it is business. It is like try and race and be as fast as you can, but also. Um, you're not taking it too serious. You're enjoying it. No, I mean, it's, there, right? this is kind of one of my main vacations of the year. You know, I don't get a lot of time off work, so it's, I got to make the most of it. And it, it is serious. Let's go racing, but let's have a lot of fun while we're there. Well, you know? I, I really love the angle that you bring to all the KOH competitors because you are definitely a unique racer. Thank you. Everybody wants to see you race. Everybody wants to listen to you blasting the music. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, everybody's stoked that you actually have a car that uh, will compete up there in the top 20. Right. Um, and that makes it fun for you. It, it makes does. it fun for everybody. It does, yeah. Um, and, and the real story here is, you know, you're just an average working class guy, just yeah. like everybody, and you can go up and compete with people that are on million dollar budgets, yeah. right? I and, try. And, <laughs> and I mean, you beat Robbie Gordon, hey, right? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Um, and... The other thing is, here we are in your garage, right? And I see you got the Plymouth here, the yeah, hot rod. Yeah. Um, but this is where that race car was built. All, all this and stuff. I, so, I, so I can't what afford. So uh, leading up to King of the Hammers, show tell us what happens in this garage. So some people won't believe it. Yeah. So usually the race car gets in here. I pull all this out, throw this in the trailer, and then. So you got the race trailer in the side yard. Exactly. And right now the race car's in it because you came home from King of the Hammers, and yeah, that's it. I Leave pulled it the panels there. off. We're not and then, thinking race yeah, car right now. Yeah. Exactly. Right? But you actually have to put this in the trailer, yeah, so that you can put the race car in here, yeah, and then you got to at least take one of these motorcycles, exactly, out of here, exactly, right? yeah, stuff it in the back, right? Because you got your little, uh, your your makeshift little, you know, easy up in the back. Yeah. you got the race trailer there. You got, I can't even explain it right when I'm looking out here <laughs> in the street, right? Um, yeah, a lot but of the stuff. The race car was built here in a true two car garage. Yeah. After it came back as from a rolling Dan, chassis. yeah, exactly. So Dan did. built the rolling chassis, but yep. you did all the plumbing, wiring, yep. fit, finish. Oh um, yeah, got it running here. You got it running. Um, so people could do this in their garage for sure. Right, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of. I mean, I got more stuff than I think a lot of other people that would be uh, dedicated <laughs> into the off road. Hobbies, I know, right? I do, and and it's always been like when I was younger, I was like, hey, I can't afford to pay somebody to do this stuff, so I got to figure out myself um how to do this and how to build this stuff and like you know i built the frame on all this stuff and and it helps me uh get better at the off-road stuff too you know it all Absolutely. blends together right it's yeah, all well, all of these hot rods have custom built frames yeah. all welded together have has a lot of the off-road type of technology exactly four linked and coilovers four yeah link, exactly uh, you know one's got a diesel one's yeah. got a manual six speed <laughs> right you know, right you got uh it, it really just shows what type of person you are. Um, and, you know, one one may say, God, what do his neighbors think? Right. Him, right? And so uh, there's one thing when there's a bunch of junk and crap 
you know, right. out in front of a house. But there's another thing when the person behind that, you know, has care and know-how and right. mechanic, you know, knowledge on how to build things, how to keep things working. Um, and I think that there's just a lot of things that you bring to the table Thanks. all the way around. Yeah, I mean, in, in just kind of making things work, you know, like a lot of this stuff, um, you know, I don't, ha I don't go out and buy special parts to go to the junkyard and get something and then making it work for my application. Mm -hmm. And I think that really goes into like the off-road when you're broken on a trail somewhere, you can be figure like, out how to get let's, out. let's figure this out, you know, there's other ways of doing things, you know, yeah. and I think that kind of helps, you know, if you do have a problem during your race, you can kind of, you know, well, get get it resolved. Hopefully, you know the John Webb race car driver um, <laughs> is a pretty cool cat, right? And then you got the John Webb Harley builder and Harley yeah. rider. You got the Rat Rod builder and yeah, driver, right? Uh, and uh, it all comes together as just a cool, you know, character, right? Right. right. Um, and you know, what's your commuter vehicle? I got a 45 Chevy with a 4BT Cummins in it. So yeah. 45 Chevy truck yeah. with a 4BT Cummins <laughs> yep. and a manual transmission. Exactly, and, yeah. And, and a 50-year-old manual transmission. Yeah, like that, right. right? <laughs> and you're getting, you know, what do you say, 35 miles a gallon yep. and commuting it 200 miles each way. Exactly. Uh, to go to work. Yep. Uh, yep. And you, you're working 410, so that does give you that three-day weekend exactly. to mess with all of your junk, right? right. So. Here we are and on hang Monday. out with the family. This is your yeah. day off. So this by is. the way, thank you yeah. for sitting yeah. down with me on for your sure. day off. For sure. Um, Thanks for coming by, man. Kind of just see, getting into the life of, of the race for John Webb because it's <laughs> it makes me jealous. You know? <laughs> I, th I think anybody who watches this, especially especially when we show all your stuff around here, like any guy right. is going to go. Oh, I want to work hard for I him. I want to be it's, him. Yeah. I want to be John Webb. You know? And you know. I'll, I'll loop back one little story that, that I'll tell before we end this that, uh, you know, I've known you forever. Right. I, I said before I met you on the trail, you, you took me out wheeling. Um, and then, you know, there was one time that I was at the Hammers uh, down in Maine camp. Um, and I saw you and we're talking, you were on a beach cruiser bicycle, oh, yeah. shorts, no shoes on. You had a, a, a basket full of beverages. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and my phone rings and it's my, it, well... Somebody I know, You're right? Um, <laughs> and uh, and this person says, "Hey, I'm flying into uh, Yucca Valley. Can you come pick me up?" And and you said, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna ride into town with you. I'll be right back." Yeah. And you showed up to my pickup with a backpack on, um, and that backpack had something packed in it. Yes. And so uh, we uh, got to the airport there, and instead of one person got off the plane, but another person got back on the plane. Right, right. And uh, allegedly, that was you. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I hear, too. And uh, so a lot of race car drivers, um, they go out on the trails, and they get the lay of the land right. uh, by being out on the trails, right? I feel you did some uh, over-the-top research and reconnaissance it's very true. Um, that year. And uh, right about from 9,000 feet, yeah. uh, down to the finish line on the lake bed. How does it look? How's the It looks look? great. It looks amazing up there. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it was pretty cold when you exited the airplane. Yeah, it was a little little chilly and the exit was a little suspect with the door opening. Well, cuz I don't think it was a skydiving airplane. <laughs> Definitely no, wasn't. <laughs> no. uh, so I think you are probably the only one that I can say that has uh, um, made it to the hammers without coming down Boone Road. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, and landed um, right there on the lake allegedly. bed. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Landing yeah. on the lake bed. So uh, that, that just makes me uh, enjoy you even that much more. <laughs> right that was amazing. That was a good time. So I hope everybody uh, enjoyed listening yeah. to John Webb uh, and hear about your 2023 King of the Hammers experience. Yeah. Ninth place finisher. Ninth place, yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll show everybody uh all my junk of all these cool <laughs> things <laughs> thanks for having us over hey thanks for the coming down all right bye. all right so this is a 1945 uh chevy pickup four so you, nine inch rear four nine inch rear with uh, fox coilovers in the rear and this was a dump truck that i found out in a field out in uh, stockton